So welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and I'm a gorilla in the wrist. Today we're looking at a Casio reissue of the A100, a watch with an iconic film tie-in. But is it any good? So today we're looking at this Casio A100 WE-7BEF. They really know how to name their watches, don't they? Um, I'm sure we've all got a different name for it, um, but that's what it is here. Um, I'm going to do a very quick run around the watch. Um, just start very quickly with the packaging. So we have one of these particularly nice Casio Vantage boxes. We have the model number. Um, let me just put that to one side. Let me just share the hang tag. Um, so this has a 3503 module in it. Um, comes in about four different colours. Um, I think there are probably more, but the ones that were available when I were looking, there was a gold one, there was a colourful, um, sort of similar silver but with a more colourful dial, and then this is a black version as well. Um, the gold one looked interesting, to be absolutely honest, the colourful ones looked interesting as well. Um, I managed to pick this one up for £23 on Amazon. Not sure how I managed that, um, but I did. Um, so a bit of a bargain at that price, I think. Um, and this is a watch that I think for a lot of people, um, certainly in the community, has a particular cachet. Um, and to me, it has a very iconic place in my history. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's just very quickly run you through the watch. Um, so let's start off by making the obvious comment. It is small. So a mere 32 millimeters across, um, it is a small watch. However, the lug to lug at 40 gives it a bit more depth and makes it sustainable. I think if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would be able to wear this. I mean, it's arguable that I can wear it at the moment anyway. Um, but I think at 40 millimeters, I can just about get away with it. Um, it has 18 millimeter lugs. So it's, it's one of these um, hair nipper bracelets, um, but comes in at 18 millimeters, um, flares out at the edges so that it looks bigger than it really is. As you can see there. It's very, very thin at a mere nine millimeters. Um, it has 30 meters of water resistance. In fact, water resistant is all it is. This is splash proof, don't go swimming in it. Um, and it has an acrylic crystal. So what that means is that if it does get scratched, which it probably will, let's be honest, it probably will, um, you can buff it up with a little bit of poly watch to get rid of it, which I think is really good. Um, it has this very unusual configuration of buttons on the dial, um, rather on the side of the case. The case itself is painted uh, resin, so it's a plastic but painted with a silver coating. Um, and the back is a clip-on case with a bit of a spec sheet. I'm trying to get it in the light right so you can read it, um, but it tells you what the back buttons do. Um, and in terms of the functionality, this is a fairly simple watch. So we have the time, hours, minutes, seconds, and an AM, PM indicator. We have a single alarm. We have a stopwatch. And we have back to the time. So that's it. The 3503 module clearly is a very simple module. Um, it is very shiny, as you can see from here. Um, it has a nicely branded clasp and one of these sliding clasps so you can get a decent size. And despite its diminutive size, it does fit on my wrist. So let me just very quickly do a wrist shot. There we go. It does look slightly ridiculous because of the size. Um, but it does fit and there is a little bit more in there so people with um, slightly bigger wrists than me eight and a half could probably still get away with wearing it so the other thing is that it has an inverted display which I'll be honest I didn't notice when I put my order in um, so caveat emptor um, read the description in future <laughs> um, I'm not I'm not a big fan of those uh, but let's get into the detailed specification Okay, let's very quickly run through the detailed specifications for this one. We have a 32mm dial width, 
positively tiny, um, but a reasonable lug to lug at 40 millimeters, which balances some of that out. It has a lug width of 18 millimeters and is a very thin nine millimeters, predominantly because it's housing that 3505 module. It weighs in at a paltry 54 grams, but is only water resistant at three atmospheres and has an acrylic crystal. So let's start off by talking about the things that I'm not a big fan of on this watch. Um, and the first one I guess is a bit obvious really is, is the size. Um, for me, uh, this it, I do struggle with this one. Um, so the buttons barely cover just one button, it's all of them. Um, and that's not the watch's fault, I'm a gorilla um, and it probably wasn't designed for me. However, I will say that trying to press the backlight um, in the night uh, is a bit like learning braille we've got to find exactly which button it is to press it works fine there's nothing wrong with it um, but navigating it in the dark is slightly problematic um, the second bit I guess I would mention is probably the inverted display now again I can't blame the watch for this I just didn't notice it when I did it before but I have other G-Shocks uh, other Casios uh, with an inverted display and I'm not a fan I think the legibility is okay but not much more than that um, so for me I think just that in, inverted um, display um, just doesn't really do it for me um, and then finally just on the backlight it works it's better than a F91 without a doubt but it's still not brilliant and it doesn't last very long so it clips on and clips off again um, so for me I'm not a big fan of that um, but those are the only things I have a real big dislike about it. Um, let's talk about the things that I like. Um, the first one is a fairly straightforward one, which is just the simplicity. I like a simple watch that does a simple job well. It has a um, very rewarding character to it. Um, this does, it's not Bluetooth, it doesn't count your steps. It can't tell you what the time in Uttar Pradesh is, for example. It does what it needs to do in a very simple and clear way. I think that's a big plus for it. Um, but the second one is slightly more ethereal. So, this is the watch, or at least a, a variant of this watch, was worn by Lieutenant First Class Ellen Louise Ripley. Which for anybody familiar with cinema in the late 70s, early 80s, will know was Ripley from Alien. I cannot tell you the profound effect that film had on me when I was 14 years old and first saw it um, and sort of changed my view about what horror cinema and what science fiction cinema could be um, and took it in a completely different direction. Um, Ripley is one of the most important characters in film history, um, almost a feminist model. Um, has so much about her, so much in the character, um, but is a survivor. Like the alien that she fights and gets away from, is a survivor. Um, on a ship of five men, two women, she is the only one that lasts. Um, and goes on through another two films, um, and various sort of films after that. Um, but is an iconic character in an iconic movie. I think both both of the first two films are iconic. Um, I saw the second one on TV. Um, sorry, I saw the first one on TV um, when I was about 14. Um, I actually went and saw the second film, Aliens, um, in London the day after it had been released. And again, and a remarkable experience. Um, the first time I'd been up to the old smoke to watch a proper not quite a premiere but you know what I mean um, and they're very different films but have had as I say a profound effect on me individually and this watch links into that so for all its flaws and I do think it has some flaws <laughs> you've heard me say um, it kind of has a place in my heart because of that connection to um, Lieutenant Ripley um, 
and that may be gob gobbledygook to most of you, um, but I hope not. So let's try let's try and sum that up. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do this, but we'll give it a go. Um, so this is an interesting watch. I got it at a ridiculously cheap price, to be honest. So I think it's a good value for money watch. Um, on anybody, anybody other than a gorilla's wrist, it would be fine. Um, for somebody with ridiculously fat, chubby fingers like me, it's not ideal. Um, but for me, all of this watch's shortfalls are drastically outweighed by its cultural significance to me. Um, and therefore, I can't really do anything other than recommend it. Um, if you haven't had that, the same cultural experience, um, then maybe you'd feel differently about it. Um, but this watch represents something specific in my life and therefore something that I am grateful um, and happy to be supportive of. Um, it's not perfect, there are some parts of it that really aren't brilliant, um, but I can overlook almost that due to the impact of the film in which it appears. Um, so that's it from me, um, I guess a slightly different review this time around. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, please comment. Had you seen the Alien and Aliens films? Did they have a dramatic impact on you? It'd be really good to hear from you about that. Um, we've got the 11.11 sale coming up soon, so next week's video is going to be my take on that. Um, and at some point in the future, um, we'll also be coming back to Casio because it's back. It's back. Um, I bought this about a week ago to replace the one that I gave to my dad. Um, and I'll be absolutely honest, it hasn't been off my wrist since. Um, so at some point I'm going to do a review of that one as well for obvious reasons um, but that's it, it's a slightly grey Saturday um, have a fantastic weekend um, and I hope to see you back soon for lots more good content take care everyone, bye bye